good to see each one of you this morning. Wayne, get your attention. <laughs> All right, good morning again. It's so good to see each and every one of you. I, we have a favorite way to start service here at Post, and we just love to be a part that God's still in the saving business. Amen? Amen. And getting to see people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ is just such a joy and a blessing. This is um, really special. Today is Lennox's birthday. We're, we're so excited. Uh, church, if you were wondering if um, starting Wallace Christian Academy was worth it, this is just a part of the results of what God did in the, the life of Lennox. I, I was privileged to be here one afternoon for, for pickup, and I, I watched her mom come through the line and pick up her and her brother, and they started making their way out the parking lot, and about halfway out, mom put on the brakes and pulled back in a parking place, and here come little Lennox running across the parking lot. And her teacher thought she had forgotten something, but she said, no, I need to talk with the preacher. And she said, I am ready to be baptized. And wow. Um, well, let, me, let me say this. This is a product of mom and dad doing family devotions with her, their children every night. It's a product of um, her teacher pouring into her life, all her family. Um, and it's a product of WCA. And we're certainly, certainly grateful for what God's doing in her life and how excited she is. You can't see her, but I promise you she's here. But Lennox, it is a great joy and an honor to baptize you, my little sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, baptized in the likeness of his death, raised again in newness of life. coming to you this morning, letting you know that Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior. He, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody more excited about getting baptized than Camden is. He is greatly, and listen, we need to rejoice with him, church. This is a great, great decision. There you go. So Camden, because of your profession, a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is an honor to baptize you, my brother. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, baptized in the likeness of his death, raised to live in newness of life. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Well, good morning. And we want to welcome y'all to posting this morning. It's such a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. This is a special day for each and every one of us. Day of the week, we come together to worship together our Lord. And it's just awesome to be that part. We got some renowned world travelers with us this morning. Miss Beth and Miss Tammy. They've been traveling all up north and everything. Miss Wanda. Y'all had a great time, didn't you? Beautiful pictures. Glad you made it home safe and appreciate you being with us this morning. This is a special day because that was my granddaughter that got baptized. Amen. There's nothing that don't get no better than that, y'all. Yeah. But you know, I got a dear brother and a great friend that says, when you don't think it can get any better, God just shows up and amazes you. Right, Tony? Amen. Every Sunday it just gets better and better. Why is that? Because we see new faces. We see our brothers and sisters and friends that we don't see sometimes throughout the week. And we all come together on this beautiful day, just praise and worship our God. And we owe him all the praise and glory for that. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for being here to worship together at Posting this morning. I hope, you, I hope you've had a good week and uh, going to have a blessed day. And prepare your hearts and minds so we can go out this week and serve a loving God and share him with the people in our communities and our families and so forth. So if you will, stand to your feet and let's get ready to sing praises. So sing along with us.
All right, so Brandon's out this morning, and the pastor's trying to get changed. He don't want to preach wet for whatever reason. I don't know, but he's on fire, so wet, they probably keep him under control, right? Mr. Steve, ain't that right? Man's on fire, ain't he? Anyway, I'm doing announcements this morning, so let's post, post them up. All right, happy birthday to Stephanie Griffin, Olive, Olivia Gaganis, Isaac Kelly, Penny Blanchard, Riley Gaganis, Bradley. Blanton and Karen West, I pronounced every one of them right. <laughs> that don't happen with my vocabulary. Brenda says I got one of my own, but that's okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Happy anniversary to Orville and Diana Davis. All right, happy anniversary to y'all. Next Sunday's homecoming, and Mr. Roy reminded me at 8 a.m. next Saturday morning we have a work day to kind of spiffy things up a little bit, so put it on your calendar and please come out to join us to help clean up and beautify the place before we have homecoming. Miss Quindy says if anybody can help in the kitchen Sunday morning, please come and see her and, and be a part of that. The meats are provided. We're having barbecue and chicken, correct? So everybody needs to bring a side and dessert. Am I right on that? Okay. All right, anything else? Hayride and Vittles at the Brine Farm. Only Roy and Rhonda, can you imagine? are hosting a good old fall ride on their farm, and Vittles will also be served. This is October the 15th at 4 p.m. If you need any information how to get to Mr. Roy and Miss Rhonda's house, just see them. But they do. When you go over there, they say you have a good time. I haven't been invited yet. Aww. I don't know why, but it's coming. I know it is. All right, let's see. Pastor Appreciation Month. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So we want to show our pastor, Pastor Chris, Pastor Brandon, that we appreciate them. There'll be a basket at the front and at the back. Just drop them a card. Let them know how much you love them. And money always shows a little extra love. <laughs> but just drop them a card and let them know that you appreciate them and you love them because uh, they have a huge responsibility in, in shepherding the flock and serving the Lord as they do so graciously and good. And they just need to know that we love them and appreciate them. That We always tell them that, but a card would just go a long ways. What else? WMU will be meeting once a month on Wednesday evenings from 7 to 8. The first meeting will be October the 19th. All ladies of all ages are invited to join. So come on out, ladies. Be a part of WMU. And I guarantee you enjoy that time of fellowship. Fall Festival, our first annual. There we went. You want to blow that up if you want me to read that, brother. <laughs> Y'all don't laugh. <laughs> it's terrible not being able to see. He says, turn around and look at that screen right there. Well, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> First annual fall festival. We're going to have a chili cook-off, trunk or treat, a bake sale, face paint, games, mojo coffee trucks going to be here October the 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. It is going to be a black. Yes, ma'am. The pastor's wife said she needed y'all's draws. Oh, trunks, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he did not. Come out. Do they want to, you want them to fix their trunks up like this? But if they want to. Okay, so she needs you to come with your cars, or SUVs. You can fancy them up if you'd like to, like we do every, every uh, before in the past. But she needs your cars here to, to be able to pass out candy. So please see Misty, Haley, Chelsea, or whomever. Uh, if you can be a part of that, let them know you are so they can prepare and be ready for you. Anything else? Okay. That's All it. right, that's it. Appreciate everybody <laughs> being here again. If you'll stand to your feet. No, no, no. Who does? I'll give you. Yes, Summer, our new children's minister. Miss Summer, stand up and let everybody see who you are. She's our new children's minister, and we are so excited for her and for her being a part of that. But please be praying for her as you do our pastors because she'll need all the prayer she can get dealing with the children. She's going to be working out schedules. She cannot do this on her own. So she'll be working schedules out. She'll be coming to each one of us and wanting us to volunteer to help, correct? So please... 
Pray about it. Be faithful and obedient to what God's laid on your heart. Nothing's more important than our kids and our children. And since the pandemic hit, we went from 50 on Wednesday night down to hardly nothing because we couldn't have any, we had to have social distancing. But we want to get that back. We want to have our Awana and our different programs going on for our children because the children is the future of the church. So thank you all for being a part of that. We got a special. Will y'all sit and pause? My granddaughter's going to sing a song. <laughs>
don't get no better than that. Uh. It don't matter whose child it is. It's just, it's awesome. That's pure, that's pure love and yeah. worship right there. Gosh, Lee. Thank you, Jesus. Uh-oh. Wow. Thank you so much, Lennox, for sharing that with us. What a blessing to see a child so excited about Jesus. How can we as adults sit back in silence? We have so much to praise him for. The fact that he saved us when we were lost and undone, unworthy and broken. He could take something so helpless and hopeless and make us whole. I thought y'all would be excited about that. <laughs> Sing this with me. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to invite you to go ahead and stand with us this morning. Welcome those around you. Yeah. 
on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was standing. You are so good. There is Children's Church this morning, so those that would like to go, you can make your way out. Follow these ladies right here up front. You want to put that in there? Awesome. Church, I truly feel blessed and honored to be able to serve such an amazing people. It seems like Sunday after Sunday, it just keeps getting better and better. God is really blessing. The fact that we get to see people baptized into the faith family, the fact that God is doing exactly what He said He would do and build His church. And we know that with growth um, comes the need for uh, more individuals to minister to those who are here. And this morning, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to, um, in just a few moments, we'll be ordaining two new deacons, and I'm excited about that. But um, I shared a word with our deacons at our last meeting. And since then, I just cannot get away from this passage of Scripture. The more I study it, the more God continues to reveal truths to me. And um, I just want to share that this morning before I call these young men forward. But you know, leading up to this passage, reminded of a special time whenever Jesus sat down with his disciples and he asked them a question. He says, who do men say that I am? And they named John the Baptist, Elijah, or, or, or some of the other prophets, they said. And, and Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? Many of you will remember, those of you who study the Bible, it was Simon Peter who spoke up at that time. And he said, well, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Simon, son of Barjona. But upon this rock I'll build my church, he said. Upon this rock, not upon Peter, but upon the confession that he made, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Church, I'm thankful today to be a part of a congregation that proclaims that same message, 
We do not serve a dead God. Been a good place for an amen right there. Our God is alive and well. He is worthy to be praised and, and worshipped as we are here for that purpose today. But I have learned this, and, and if you've been a part of a congregation for any length of time, you learn this pretty quick that when the Lord is building His church, there's an adversary that's always trying to tear apart the good that God is doing. And, and unfortunately, He has a way of using individuals just like you and I to do it. And I want to read this passage of Scripture this morning, share with you a few thoughts. And then I want us to bring our deacons forward as we ordain a couple and, and charge the church as well as these deacons. But I'm in Acts chapter 6 to begin with. If you've got your Bibles, you want to turn there. If you don't have your Bibles, your cell phones, your tablets, your watch on the screen, I just encourage you to listen to the Word of God. Beginning in verse 1 of Acts chapter 6, are you there? About half of you, the others will catch up. Page 963 in my Bible. Now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint. Let me say that again. God was building His church and there arose a complaint. A complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of disciples and said, It's not desirable that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. But we, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of priests were obedient to the faith. Pray with me. Eternal Father, Lord, into your presence we come, thanking you for your holy word. God is so evidently needed for such a time as this. And God, I can only pray for your power. For Lord, I'm nothing but an empty vessel. So God, would you come and fill this vessel today to overflowing and pour it out that the power and the glory of Christ our Savior would be so evident in this place. Speak to every heart, O oh God. Bind the adversary. Keep him far from this place and deal with every heart. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. All is vain unless You come down. Move in this house. Draw souls. Build Your church. Because I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much. I shared with you a moment ago that this passage of Scripture became very precious to me as I shared it with our deacons. And not that it was the first time that I had read by any stretch of the imagination, but 
It seems like every time you go back to the Word of God, no matter how many times you have studied it, there's yet more to glean from the Scripture. And certainly that is the case with this passage. As Dr. Luke is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he he shares how a joyous time it was that, that God was doing exactly what He said. He was building His church. He was building it from the point of multiplying. I'm not talking about just adding. He was multiplying the church. People were coming by the groves. If you back up just a little bit, you'll find where it not only multiplied, there were some 3,000 souls that were saved and baptized on one day. Could you imagine that today? Oh, that's what I pray for. That God would move in with a fresh wind and a fresh fire and we would see multitudes of people come to the saving knowledge of Christ. How many of you know we're serving the same God that we're talking about right here? Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. What happens is, is often the church becomes comfortable in doing church their way rather than letting go and letting the power of the Holy Spirit take precedence in their life and in the life of the service. But that is exactly what we're seeing in this church. But here we also see a picture of none other than Satan himself trying to drive a wedge, if you will, in between the holy power of God and the covenant that he has with his people. He's wanting to put a stop to it. And I promise you, it is no different today than what, what he wants to do here at Post and Baptist Church as God is building it. He wants to drive a wedge and bring a halt to the good things God is doing. I don't know about you, I cannot be your voice, but as for this pastor, I am grateful that I get to go, go in that baptistry and get wet Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Listen, I'll just go ahead and say, God's not doing that at every congregation. He's not manifesting His presence in every place. But there's just something going on here, a hunger and a thirst. And God has just blessed us with an extra taste. And I'm so, so thankful for that. But I also know this, because it's happening. And I'm just telling you right now this morning that there's little ways that the adversary begins to rear his ugly head and try to wiggle in and begin to tear apart. Exactly, get this. In this church we just read, everybody in there were disciples, Scripture said. In other words, they were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. It did not matter that some were Hebrew and some were Hellenists. That is irrelevant. Matter of fact, I hope everybody in here knows this morning that the ground is level at the foot of the cross. It does not matter if you're rich or you're poor. It does not matter if you're young, if you're old, if you're male, if you're female. The blood of Jesus Christ covers Sin of all people, regardless of where you come from. In in other words, this morning, if you look around, there's a a, a large, a diverse group of people in here as well. Irregardless, every person in the congregation is of equal importance. Everybody is. Everybody is loved unconditionally by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He does not see the outside of you. He does not care where your walk of life had taken you. What He cares about is your soul and is it washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's that's what He's concerned with this morning. And and, and understand this, church, regardless of how different you might look from the next person sitting, sitting beside you, it doesn't matter. What matters is this, is that He loves you in spite of yourself. But here Satan had wiggled in and began stirring the pot, if you will. And stirring it to the point where one crowd thought they were being neglected. My prayer is this. 
is that we've got some loving and caring individuals in this congregation that never gets stuck to one crowd of people and only ministers to people that look like them, but they'll reach out beyond the boundaries and go to people who look least like them. Isn't that exactly what Jesus did? He didn't hang around with people that looked like him. He called sinners. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He didn't always do what what society thought was right. He sat down at the well with a prostitute. He raised up dead men. He touched people with leprosy, which was absolutely unheard of. He did the unthinkable because he wanted everybody to know him as Lord and Savior. And church, here in the congregation of this church that Scripture tells us was multiplying, Jesus was blessing. He was doing exactly what He promised. He would send the Holy Spirit with power and authority, and the church just began to blossom. And, and, and listen, I am so thankful once again. But let me tell you, it, it never fails that when things are so good, Somebody has always got a complaint. Do you want to know why the Lord God said that he was sorry he ever made man? Go back to Genesis chapter 6. What was it that made God confess such a statement that he was sorry he ever made man? Because they were not, they were an unhappy people that complained about every little thing. It did not matter what God did in their life. They would, he would do something good for them and then they'd no sooner start complaining. If you, in other words, if you want to squash God's hand from being on this place, then just start complaining. Just get, I mean, well, I don't really like that song. I don't really like, the, the air conditioning is too cold in here. No, it's not. Y'all, come on. Bring a quilt with you. It's not. It's not. It, it, listen, it does not matter if you like the music or not because it's not about you and it's not about me. It's not. I, I hope you know that my Bible and your Bible tells you that when we confess the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we were crucified with Christ. We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. That tells me this. When we come through that door, we don't come in looking for what we can get out of it. We come in as to what we can give in our praise and adoration to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about me. I'm not in this place to make me comfortable. And you ought not to come in to make you comfortable. It's all about Jesus. But here they said, um, hey, we're, we're being neglected over here. We're, we're not getting what they're getting. Whether they were or not, I, I really don't know. But they raised such a fuss about it that I'm thankful there were some people in that congregation that just had wisdom enough to know that, hey, we're going to do what Barney Fife said, and we're going to nip it in the bud right now. We're going, we're, going, we're going to wash this out. If that is a problem, we're going to go ahead and make sure that everybody is ministered to equally. <laughs> Get this. There... They were complaining. The church was living at that time, just in case you don't know. The church was living in a manner as if Jesus was coming back at any moment. In other words, they were selling all the unnecessary things in their life, getting ready, and they were bringing all their proceeds to the house of God. And it was distributed equally. And they were doing it as faithfully as they knew how. But yet, somehow, some way, some people began to murmur and complain. I don't know about you, but I really love what God's doing here. I really love how he is moving in this place. And I don't want to be the weak link that causes him to stop. I, I really don't. I, I want him to keep on keeping on. I want him to keep pouring it out on this place. Because listen, there's, I know things are kind of tight in here this morning, but we can bunch up and make room for some more that God wants to bring in here. We can. It is, listen, it's a whosoever will gospel. Paul said this, he, he goes on, that complaint arose. Then he said, I got it. 
I got it. The 12 apostles at that time, they summoned the multitude and said, Hey, I want you to set some individuals in place. Some that you think we can set over this situation and work it all out. I, for one, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I believe I serve with the greatest body of deacons this side of heaven. I, I'm, I'm, and I mean that. They have servant's heart. Everything they do is driven underneath the authority of God and wanting His will to be done here. And that's exactly what this church was asking for. God, we just need some men that are full of faith, that are full of the Holy Spirit, that are of good reputation. God, just give us these seven men. I know Pastor Brandon has said it numerous times. You heard one of our parishioners say it this morning, and I'll add to it. It doesn't matter how many staff members you bring on here, there's no way <laughs> that we'll be able to minister to everybody in a congregation this size. There's just no way. As much as we desire to, and, and listen, the apostles could not minister to that congregation. So they brought alongside some individuals that they knew were trustworthy and able to handle this situation. And they called them. And I love what the Word of God says when they came before them. Give me verse 3 up there. Wake up. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, seek out among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this order. Because we need to give ourselves to prayer and the preaching of the word. Pray, that seemed, Some of you would disagree with that. Some of you, listen, that's the whole purpose the deacons were put in place. They weren't called deacons at this point, but there were two words in there that we get our English word deacon from. In this passage of Scripture, he wanted to put them, he says, let's put them over the distribution. And they would serve. And, and both of those in the Greek, they translate to, in our English word, deacon. Meaning they would be the servants over this part. So the apostles could give themselves to preaching and, and praying and, and keeping the word of God going. Because listen, that was what was reaching the souls. And people were getting saved. So they, they called them and they did that. We're going to give ourselves to this. But then they go on. And I, I love this part there. And the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Boy, I, I'm not in a rush to leave this world but if my wife so chooses to get me a tombstone when I do, I cannot think of anything better to put on it than those words I just read. A man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. There, there's nothing that could be said of an individual any better than that. That you are full of faith. And I cannot help this morning but ask, how do people know you? What, what are people saying about you? A man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit, a person of good reputation. I, I, I don't know what they're saying, but nevertheless, they chose out Stephen and they chose out Philip and they chose out these others and brought them before. And the Word of God says they, they laid hands on them. They, they prayed over them and they set them to that duty. And church, wow. I am so thankful, and I got to share this with you, because six years ago, when God brought my family here, there, was, there wasn't enough men in the congregation to make up a deacon body. It's the truth. So those two or three that were on the deacon board... They just kept doing the best they could do, right on and right on. And bless the Lord, would you look around today at how God has multiplied His church. The thought that God has grown this congregation to the point that we've had to exceed beyond just trying to keep the number of families per deacon to, to a level that they could minister to every need. And I, I'm so thankful this morning that 
the church has called to add on two more young men. Actually added on others, but they were already ordained. But these young men, wow. One is like extra special. Both of them are special, but one of them is a little bit extra special because he um, took my daughter away from me. <laughs> I still love him. I still love him. But the thought that I, I'm, I'm privileged to serve. Somebody was um, asking me about them the other day, and, and I cannot remember where I was at or who it was, but, you know, I, I just simply shared this. I, you know, I did not grow up in Wallace, North Carolina. My, my son-in-law did, and I've never heard a cross word from anybody about him. And, and, and honestly, I've never heard a cross word about Lee except from his wife, Sarah. <laughs> but they're both wonderful young men that have a deep love for this congregation and has a servant's heart. I don't want us to misunderstand this office of deacon. It's not some hierarchy of the church because that word actually just means servant. And if you'll <laughs> go back into Jesus' lifetime, there's no greater picture of servanthood than whenever he got up from the table and girded himself with a towel, got down on his knees and washed his own disciples' feet. That that's, gives you and I a vivid illustration of what a deacon is. To serve ministering to the needs of the congregation, no matter what it is. So I'm going to ask both Graham and Lee if they would to make their way to the front. And I'm going to ask their wives to come with them as well. Y'all can stand right there. This is Lee and his wife, Sarah, Graham, and my daughter and his wife, <laughs> Haley. i got to give him a hard time. But let me say this first. I, I'm so proud of both of you that at such a young age, you have been seen as a, a servant a lover of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to share this with you. And I realize you're standing, but you can handle it. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, in verse 8, the Word of God says, Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested. Then let them serve as deacons being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not gossipers, temperate or clear-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Whenever the Word of God tells us that as deacons we must be reverent, Understand what Paul is telling this young pastor as he writes. Timothy being the pastor at the church of Ephesus who was in pretty much the same situation in need of help as the church was growing. He said to Timothy, make sure that these men are reverent. That they would not only fear the Lord, 
but they would be mature in important matters. Because men, I'll promise you, there will be some matters within the church that you will encounter from time to time that will just absolutely blow you away. Some things that will shake you to the core. I remember as just a young man, whenever God called me to serve as deacon in my home church, I was not on very long whenever some things arose that really kind of took the wind out of my sail to the point that I was ready to submit my resignation. But whenever Paul says that we need to be mature in these matters, God is putting you in this office, if you will, because He knows you're able to handle it and you're going to seek His leadership. But you're also going to learn some things that need to be kept in confidence. He says this, you need to be reverent because if you're not, you might begin to think different of individuals when you find out things in their life. And remember, we're to love everybody regardless of where they come from or what happens to them. So that's why he says we're to be reverent and not double-tongued. Not a hypocrite. Not one way to an individual's face and talking about them differently behind their back. He goes on to add to that. Hmm. Not given to much wine. Might I remind you that during biblical times, wine was used for medicinal purposes. And I assure you of this, that in the flesh, we don't need any help clouding our mind. That's why he would say, don't give yourself to it. Not greedy for money. He does not want us to be easily swayed or hungry, a workaholic. We don't need anything to take us away from our families in a strive for more money, for bigger things. We need to put God first. Money is the root of all kinds of evil. Don't let it be Lord of your life. Verse 9, he says, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. That mystery just simply equates to the fact that it's for everybody. For whoever confesses the Lord Jesus Christ. The people, that means the people that look like you and the people that don't. In Paul's day, it meant both the Jew and the Gentile. But that mystery of the faith, it's the saving power of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I would say this, Paul says to let both, let these also be tested. Your life has already bared the fruit. You've stood the test and that's why this congregation has chosen you to serve. But then he goes and speaks to the wife. He says the wife must be reverent. The same as he is saying to the husband that this wife must be one that is mature in important matters carries themselves like a Proverbs 31 woman. Not a gossiper. Not given to cliques and not backbiting. But temperate. Faithful in all things. Verse 12 can stir a lot of controversy, but I want to share with you exactly what the Word of God is saying here, let deacons be the husbands of one wife. I assure you of this, the Apostle Paul was not talking about polygamy. 
for that was unheard of in Rome during that time. It would have been absolutely unwelcomed in the church in any stretch of the imagination. He was not saying that a man had to have a wife to serve as a deacon. For if that were the case, he would have isolated himself. But whenever he says, let deacons be the husbands of one wife, I would say this, men guard your mind. Because if there's, this is probably the single most greatest thing that drives a wedge between couples and brings you to divorce. A man's mind needs to be set on the woman that God has blessed him with in the thought not to be looking upon any other woman but as Solomon said to be satisfied with the wife of your youth but he goes on to say ruling their children and their own houses well I want you to look at me for just a minute and I want to share with you exactly what was shared with me whenever I stood where you were. God, family, and then the church. Don't get those out of order. You serve the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And you remember that God called you to be husbands and fathers before He called you to this office of deacon. Because you are taking on this office it comes along with many responsibilities. But once again, don't get these out of order. Keep God first. Give your family the time and attention that it's deserving of. Don't ever let your office bring a barrier between your home. Paul closes with this, for those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. I love what he said. You've obtained for yourselves a good standing and great boldness. I want to say this again, church. They put their pants on just like you do. They're ordinary people. They just want to serve. And quite honestly, every born-again believer of the Lord Jesus Christ is a servant. And if we'll serve together with that mindset, God can do what He said and grow His church. I'm proud of these men and the, and the stand that they're taking, the, the example that they are. But once again, they're not to be elevated to some hierarchy. They're just simple, humble servants here to minister to the needs of this people. I want to do this this morning. I'm going to ask all ordained deacons, whether you are active at this time or whether you are a member of this church or not, if you are ordained deacon, I want you to come this morning and surround these families. Doesn't matter if you're a member of this congregation or not. <clears throat> Lee and Graham, these are men that have walked where you are about to walk. They've endured trials that you're about to endure. and they are persevering. Now I'm going to ask you men, if you would, is to get as close as you can and just put your hands on them. And Brother Pat, I'm going to ask you if you would lead us in prayer. And I'm going to ask my daddy if he would pray after that. And any of you men that would like to pray, please do. Brother Pat.
Father. Lord, what a joyous time. A joyous time to see how you are doing exactly what you told us in your word. You're faithful to build your church. You're faithful to put people in place, God, that's necessary to continue your great work. And God, we are so blessed here to have such amazing, humble servants. And God, I thank you for these today that are coming before you, confessing, God, that they can't, but they are willing to through you. God, they're just humbling their hearts, seeking your guidance and strength for all that you set their hands to. God, I pray, pray your blessings upon their families. God, upon Sarah and the twins and God, upon Haley and, and little Stephen. God, just bless them. Use them. Help them to be a beacon, Lord. Not just here in this place, but God, wherever you lead them in life. Help them to shine for you. God, for each one of these faithful servants that are here this morning, God, bless them as well. God, they just um, desire for you to have your way in their life. So God, once again, you just um, have thine own way, Lord. Be glorified in each life corporately in this place. And God, may we be a soul-winning congregation because we're filled with the love of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
believe this is your certificate of ordination. We're just honored to be able to serve with you and Sarah both. Looking forward to how God's going to use you in the days ahead, both. Same for you, Graham and Haley. Just proud of y'all. I feel like Dwayne right now. It's extra special. As a parent, you pray from the time that you find out your wife is with child. Before you ever get to lay eyes on them, you just pray, God, save them at the earliest opportunity and help them to serve you all the days of their life. I cannot tell you <laughs> what this does for me today. To see my daughter standing here in love with Jesus, in love with her church, and being able to serve. It's an honor. And as I said, you're all special to me, but she's a little bit extra special, okay? But church, we are blessed. I mean truly blessed. I'm going to ask the praise team to go ahead and start making their way up here. We have a most favorite song. I'm sure you probably know it or you sang it, heard it, the goodness of God. God has been far better to us than we could ever deserve. I said God has been far better to us than we could ever deserve. And He's, he's worthy of our praise. I'm going to let y'all... Have a seat for just a Well, no, you're going to have to stand up anyway. But church, I want you to know this, that regardless of where life has taken you, the hard roads you have gone down, you've never gone anywhere or done anything that caused Jesus to stop loving you. He loves you just like you are. And this goodness that we're about to sing of, it's a whosoever goodness. He can bestow it upon your life this morning. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, let me just say this. Today is the day of salvation. Do not harden your heart. All it takes is doing exactly what little Camden and Lennox did. If the simple mind of a child can understand the message of a gospel, don't complicate it as adults. It's a confession of the mouth, a belief in the heart that Jesus Christ died for you. He's that good. If you feel Him calling you this morning, I'd be honored to pray with you, pray for you. Maybe you just want to come to this altar this morning. Just a time for you and God right here at this altar. It's open. Or maybe you feel like God's calling you to be a part of this wonderful, the greatest church this side of heaven. If that's you, you come right here as well. I'll share with you how God can use you the same way He's using these. Let's stand together and sing. Goodness. 
can't see her, I know. <laughs> now you can see her. <laughs> Miss Molly is coming this morning letting you know that Jesus Christ is her Lord and Savior. She is asking him into her heart. Wow. That is just awesome. She has been talking with granddaddy and grandma and mama for a while. And, and um, this morning she came up and said, I want Jesus in my heart. So... Church, it's that easy. Don't complicate it. You don't have to make it hard. It's so simple. A child can understand. We adults can understand it too. And um, so we're going to set up a time to be baptized. Miss Molly, are you excited? Yeah, me too. Hey, I don't know about you. My Bible tells me that it causes a party in heaven when a lost child comes home. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Should be a time of celebration. We thank God for this. Miss Molly, you stand right here. I want y'all to come and love on her and um, just let her know that you're going to be praying for her. I want you to be praying for these young men and their wives as well and, and all, all our deacons. We are, we are more or less, we're trying to refocus on ministering to every person. In whatever way we can, we want to meet the needs and love on everybody the very best that we can. So you work with us, you shed grace on us, and we're going to do the same for you. And listen, as long as we'll remain unified, God can build this church to amazing things. So listen, I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. Come and love on Molly and these young men. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. I, do know, I don't think there'll be any youth tonight. Pastor Brandon's on vacation, so... Um, young people, I think you got the night off. God bless you and thank you for being here. Play practice at five, five o'clock. Play practice. <laughs>